We're going to start with the boiling water method just because the fuel tablets in that pocket stove stink and I'd like to get them back in that ammo can so that doesn't stink up the house. Um, so yeah, on that topic, if you are going to be using the boiling water method and you don't have access to some sort of fuel source besides the tabs and you are going to be reliant on an Esbit pocket stove like that, might be a good idea to store them in some sort of airtight container so that it doesn't stink up the rest of your storage solution, whether that's your backpack or um, a bag or a little survival kit or something like that. If your situation is just a natural disaster where you still at least have access to your natural gas line or electricity, then you don't need to rely on camping style propane tanks or kerosene or pocket stoves. If you don't have access to any of that and it's more of like a camping situation, then obviously you'll need to gather firewood in order to build a big enough fire to boil the water. There's a little bit more involved, like I kind of mentioned in the first video, you're going to have to have not only a means of creating the heat source, but a vessel to hold the water in to be heated to get to that rolling boil that you need it to get to. Something to elevate it up off of the heat source. Like if you're doing it in a campfire, you want some sort of uh, like grate to sit above the coals. A big enough vessel to keep the water in to make it worth all the time and energy it takes to build the fire to heat the water to then purify it, and then something to drink the water out of afterwards. This will make a little bit more sense visually. So I've got a couple different cups of water. Depending on the source of water, it might be dirty. Clean version of water it looks a lot different. You can take the time to wait until everything settles out and maybe just siphon out the cleaner parts. You can tell it's not completely effective if some of it's just gonna stay floating at the top and the rest of it settles to the bottom. If you just pour this entire cup of dirty water directly into your pot or pan or cup, whatever you're using to boil the water in, not only is it not going to remove any of the taste, but it's just going to become even stronger tasting of dirt or whatever, heavy metals or pesticides, fertilizers, whatever is in the water that you don't necessarily want to be in there. Um, but it's going to get stronger tasting because the water will be evaporating out as you heat the water to eventually get it to the rolling boil. So ideally, you'd filter it out um, or at least strain it out with maybe a bandana or some piece of clean fabric to help minimize some of that, at least the particles that you can see. But boiling is never going to get the water clean enough to where it's how it would look after it came out of a very finely filtered mechanical filtration device. That being said, like we talked about in the first video as well, it is one of the more long-term solutions for continually purifying water as long as you have access to the fuel source and the water itself. You can boil as much water as you want. It's not as discreet because if you're out camping and you need to make a, a fire to create the heat to boil the water, then risking being seen, the smoke, and especially at night, the fire itself is pretty easy to see. So everything else besides boiling is a lot more discreet. Since you're waiting for the water to get either to that 212 degrees Fahrenheit or 100 degrees Celsius, obviously you're going to have to wait a little while for the water to cool off before you can actually drink it. You can maybe put your pot or cup into whatever your original water source was to help cool it off. So if you have boiling water in a cup like this and you want it to cool off more quickly than it would just leaving it out, then submerging the cup only to just below the rim. Get some water flowing over it will help cool it off faster than just letting it slowly cool off in ambient environment. There could be certain situations where having that elevated temperature water post at least a small cooling down period would be nice to have. Uh, for example, if you're out in a cold environment and you're needing a way to warm yourself up, then having access to warm water would be nice. Whereas if you're in sort of 
some sort of desert environment or you're living in the south and a hurricane has come through and you don't have electricity, you don't have air conditioning, you'd like a way to cool off, having to drink hot water is not going to be as much fun as at least drinking room temperature water that you'd be able to drink if you use the chemical or the mechanical filtration. And then one last con to talk through with boiling water is it requires pretty close attention. If you let the water get to the point where it's boiling and then you go off to do something else or you didn't realize it started boiling and you didn't catch it, the more time it sits there boiling, the more fuel you're wasting and the more water you're slowly ev evaporating off, turning into steam. There's also a risk of, depending on what heat source you're using to create the fire if it's not being supervised, could result in some sort of fire that's extending beyond the controlled fire that you had going. Both the chemical and the mechanical filtration don't require as much attention for such long periods of time as boiling water does.